Predator. It's they really are crazy. really, really good. Oh, oh, look at that. They take it out. Wow. The bristle back. Okay. This hero, he's slaughtered these bands speaking mm. to the hero diversity here in South America. Totally different from the bands we saw in the series just earlier today. I think Rude Mother, seconds, he, where was she? Yeah, he won the game with the darks here, but that was with Bristle, right? For Vitaly? Yes, I believe so. I feel like that was a pretty good uh, series for them overall. But uh, I do remember that uh, Vitaly played very well overall. And, and I think like the darks here was uh, was a good component. And I would not mind seeing that again, even if it's not with the Bristle. I feel like if you can go for one of these melee carries yep. and uh, play one of those gameplay styles, I wouldn't mind that as a potential eighth overall here. Mm -hmm. Even go uh... Rubik over Nyx. Wow. Even the DK that they play on analog could benefit a lot from the from the dark yeah. sea, I think. This is a, a very rare opener. Uh, this might even be the first time we've seen this in all of season two. We've <laughs> seen true, a couple actually. first phase Rubik's, but actual first pick Rubik, exceptionally rare. It definitely feels that way. I mean, what do Thunder Pirate like to take? They like to take Viper, so Rubik counters Viper. So there's like Timber open. There's... Yeah, I guess Mars. the Viper is a really good one because stealing the, the W from Viper is insane for Rubik. Give me a Mars Coddle, Thunder Predator. Throw us back to the roots. I do All think right, you're right on the first Mars. Ones. There you go. Oh, of course. The Ross is making a return. Now, it wasn't Thunder Predator who was playing it. That was some of our other teams in the uh, region. I think they played a little bit of it. Uh, oh, yeah. I see one game, actually. Yeah. All but, right. I did play one game of Shaman on Hokori. Uh, not sure if it was after or before seconds, Analog maybe. joined, but they do have one game. Likely to be of the four Shaman. This is your Moose hero, I think, right? Yep. Pretty pretty sure it's so going to be that. Yeah, maybe. Probably the lane pairing. Okay. Let's hmm. do it. Uh, what do I want here, though? Let me of think. Course. Is the Dex so here worth no it? Centaur. Uh... I don't like the Rubik Darks here as like uh, I guess they do have a lot of wave shove, it's so pretty you, you can like just Dyer stack, D but you're not like strong DP or something. In fighting. Oh, okay. Early troll. Hmm. So he's been banned out quite a bit in the later phases. I, I kind of get it if you're really set on troll. He he's pretty much in that jug category of well rounded. Yeah. But two pretty solid disables between Mars and the Shadow Shadow. I guess three really if you throw the hex in there. Yeah, I think a lot of ways they, to control this, this troll. hero because he is a Senjin Yasha hero, but he can also rush BKB uh, if the game is rough. So they have Sang like multiple ways of dealing with those guys. Ah, uh, that's the item, baby. Yeah. Yeah. It feels real good. Are you happy with the place of status resistance right now, Trent? Because I kind of am. I, I feel yes. like it, it's just S and Y that has it, right? Is there anything else that gives you status resistance? Uh, the uh, sliver. Yeah, just neutrals. Okay, sliver. Uh, yeah, so we've got one item and 25%. You can't stack it anymore. It, it feels good. Not broken, but definitely has its place. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, it's got like it's a good thing to have for certain heroes. Uh, so I guess yeah. Eon Disc, technically, when you have the little shield on. That's got like what eighty percent status resistance or something. Uh, I think you're right. Yeah, although you don't really think of it like that. Remaining. Does it even still no. have that? I'm Wait, gonna what? check actually. I I'm not I, sure. I, I, I don't I think it does the dispel. What you guys talking about? It only has a strong dispel, right? On Seventy-five percent uh... status resistance. Yeah, two point yeah, five yeah, seconds. Okay. Still there. There you go. I was close. I guessed eighty-five percent. I mean, I'll everyone just it. ignores you, oh, so hey, it's almost. like you know, <laughs> you never really get to use it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although it's cool because if you get hit with like a, a doom or something, then you'll actually burn off a lot of the doom, right? Yeah, yeah, During exactly. It. Yeah, it's not terrible, but like a lot of the times the doom, like it only procs after doom started, so mm -hmm. it, it doesn't like you would need to be doomed with the Aeon shield being proc, which usually like <laughs> are not gonna not gonna go for that. Let's hope All not right. at least. Well, you know, yeah, not until stop it's pooping on my favorite yeah, item. There you go. I, I like it. It's your favorite uh, item. Um, maybe not my favorite, 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 but as like uh, a position five, position four player primarily, I think it's one of the greatest additions to Dota two in terms of giving you an out against those really lame one shots. Like, I don't know. It's uh, you used to have no options against Chrono. Now you true, can get Chrono and actually do something.
that's uh, that's a really nice feeling. Hmm. Guys, what is I it? like things that support supports. Is that too meta? Yeah, that's fine. What what is a hero that they want to play with a ranged offlaner? I'm trying to think of one that's good with Rubik. <sighs> like Axe. I mean, I think you can go all uh, <laughs> like uh, you can go full wave shove. Pango, so that the Rubik can pull and rotate. Yeah, Axe is okay. Even... Yeah, we're really being tough on Rubik here. I get it. Who does he lane with? Everybody's terrible. Well, Centaur's banned, and they have Mars, man. It's like... All right, yep. Sand King. Sand King. Uh, it's okay. It's just like melee versions are just better. You know what I mean? Or like Lena's yep. better, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like Underlord? Again, it's, it's... like... Eh, you, know. you pull him I mean, back into like the, the pit, you see, Trent. Underlord. You pit him. You telekinesis him. You yank him back in. They get pitted again. <laughs> Why are we first facing Ruby? Is it literally just because of the Viper, though? I feel like this was a, a large overreaction. Well, now they have a telekinesis I guess coverage Puck for the Puck. Too. But, yeah. like, when's the last time they even played Rubik? I'm looking through their games, and Radiant they don't even play this hero. No, I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Neither oh, team This draft does. is really uh, weird, right, in terms of the supports they're picking. Undying also really rare. I mean, are they setting up here for, like, Spectre? Um, what are our well, other Undying lane combos? I mean, they just the Troll. No, we right? got Troll. Yeah. We have to, I'm an idiot. We have Troll. But this just I looks mean, like their games that they played versus SG, right? With, like, the Bristle, the Darkseer, the Undying. They just, you know, Troll is just going to be that hero where you just send I mean, him they... forth. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I do like the combination of the Axis with the Tombstone. Uh, not being able to hit it that easily. It's it actually is... really strong. Is Undying really that good though? Like, I feel like Bar's Shadow Shaman is a lane that does not that he, they don't care about him. Specifically, but I actually, counters. Mars. I actually think Troll Undying is probably one of the strongest lanes possible. Okay, it's it's really good. It's all you care about. Like you're just playing for the lane with this troll yep. with with his Undying. You know what I mean? Yeah. What okay. they really need is more control because the mid game undying doesn't help troll that much unless the tombstone is on for like six seconds or something. Maybe that's more. I'm, yeah. I guess I'm thinking of like Dying. ten minutes plus. Yeah. Where it is. Sure. Troll has a great lane. This Wait, is amazing. What? I what love is the going pango. on here? Is this support Mars? It's support Mars, right? Uh, it probably. Well, the Ostop plays Pango too. Uh, but so then it could I, be I think five puck off lane is almost always. Yeah, but it could be MJZ on the puck or the Mars. I see. So I think it's, ooh, right? Yeah, I. I All right, it's so probably hey, MJZ Mars. Mars. Yeah. Hear me out, right? Yeah, it'll be five Mars. <laughs> okay, I was thinking five Shaman, four Mars, three Pango, two Puck. Nah, just five the Mars, Puck Dying middle, Pango back. three, Shaman four. Tony. Hmm. Keeping it simple inside of Hokori looks like some comfort heroes overall. Yeah. I, I guess it is good to play to your strengths. This just this lineup looks a little flat. I feel like Thunder Predator have way more Ten options, way way flashier heroes that can kind of just cripple a game. Remaining. And for Okori, these heroes look fragile to me. Like they all kind of need Radiant certain things to go their way, and if they don't, I mean, I don't know what happens. This is not Paris Fashion Week. This is Dota Two. <laughs> gotta kill the ancient. <laughs> Doesn't matter if it's flashy, you just gotta win. <laughs> well, yeah, you're not wrong. You are saying a <laughs> truth right now. But I, well, you could have pulled I, out like Carnival or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Paris Fashion Week. <laughs> <laughs> Five seconds. Boy, you, you're so cultured. I mean, we, we used to hate <laughs> Tiny so much, and now it's a four pick Tiny. It's what we were asking for the whole DPC, and it finally happens. That's true. It is nice to see yeah. it come a little bit later when it actually looks yeah. like a nice game Radiant for it. Team ban. So oh. that's uh, that's going mid. That's an analog tiny. Yeah, I think so. We're looking for an off laner here. See, they banned the Underlord, Trent. I tried to tell you. I explained it, right? You, you lock him in and you pull you him did. back, you see. Yep. No, you you were there. The minus attack and damage is pretty good, actually. Ruby <laughs> was Underlord. You went for the layup, and I just shot you down. Uh, how about Sand King? For real. No joke. So Corey takes Sand King. Uh, okay. That or Slardar. They, I think they're going to do probably Slardar based All on right. the past picks. I, I do mm. love the Slardar. It, uh, how many times have they I don't like it when you it don't twice? know the, the position one. So I think that it's going to be a bad pick, but I think they're going to pick it. I mean, it's actually going to deny Drug and Lifestealer. Ooh, uh, they could also tied. Isn't that good against all these? I actually thought they were going to ban tied, which is why I didn't say it. I oh. thought they were going to, because whenever someone bans Underlord, they always ban tied. Because he has the Kraken shell, you see, Bowie. 
Yeah, I, I'm trying to think if if the Leshrac <laughs> is good because they it would be nice to have push, but then you have two range offlaners, uh, like two range heroes in the offlane. Remaining. Is that too bad? You guys think? Two ranged offlaners. Uh, uh, I mean, like two. All right, like, I've got this. You ready? Are you ready for this? They're about to pick. Slardar and Terrorblade. Oh my god, I've, I got this. 10 out of 10. Slardar, lose, because yeah, they're about to pick TB be, on your ass. Yep, 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 yep. This is yep, 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 yep. And MNZ. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, I don't think Terrorblade is that good of a hero right now, but it, it is a good response to Slardar, for sure. Remaining. Uh, Come on, give it to me, baby. Give me the Slardar and the TB. Hmm. I mean, it's not even that good of a matchup versus Stroll, guys. Like, they can go TB, but I feel yeah, like... it's Terror Wave and the Puck Coil. Monkey and... King. Oh, Give me yeah. Monkey yeah. King. All right, ladies and oh, gentlemen, thank you. It's been lovely Jeez. being here. <laughs> All right. Uh, easy game, Thunder Predator. Thank you. No, no, no. I disagree. I think Hokori, they have strong lanes. What? Okay. First of all, because Slardar, he, you know, he's bad versus Terrorblade 25 minutes wait, in. But wait, 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 wait. So we started off with this, like, I mean, what could you even pair Rubik with? And now you're saying they have strong lanes? So have we flip-flopped uh, on the Rubik? What, Slardar enables him that much there, B-Man? No, 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 come on. Troll Undying is a one lane, in my opinion. And I okay, think there's one. the Tiny is not going to lose his lane. Uh, so that's like a lane and a half, you know, obviously. Uh, it's going to depend on Leo's style versus analog playing. Uh, All right. So that's if Leo's style gets a, a solo kill for lanes? first blood, you're buying me lunch tomorrow. That's, okay. that's just a fact. All right. All right. I'll buy you. You, you, you like the, you like guac, right? I can, I can buy Chipotle. Some. Hell yeah. Some yeah. guacamole. I'll yeah. load it up. It'll be great. I'll send you a picture. Perfect. Because I think Leo's style is going to do very well against analog. He's not going to crush him because analog's a strong player. But Leo Styles not going to give him anything close to a a, a one lane here. So it's going to be a good test I, I for Analog. Go I feel like yeah. you know we we didn't had uh, the Chris Lux and the Leo Styles playing versus him, so we'll see how that uh, goes. Really excited though. This is going to be hype, man. This is going to be very hype indeed. Game number one. It starts now. We've got Gary, we've got Theban, and we've got some beautiful we cosmetics and a chair. And, and a chair. Well, that's good. Welcome back, Trent. So, Gary, take it away, buddy. Do you think the Slardar is going to do it? Will Vitali make it work or will he fall flat? Oh, man. When, yeah, when, when Trent just gets up and leaves like that, he is so confident in, uh, in, in things going his way, right? Slardar, last pick for Corey. They were kind of expecting that coming. The Terrorblade response comes out and punches from Thunder Predator. Yep. Even I, uh, I don't know how this Slardar is going to do. He's got a Rubik in lane. He's against TB plus mm -hmm. MJZ Mars. What do you reckon? It's going to be fine. It was just a TB Mars. It's not like he's going to destroy the Slaughter. Slaughter is going to have his lane. TB is going to have his lane. At some point, TB will have to go into the jungle. And then it's up to Analog on this Tiny to get some kills on the TB. I think we've seen this before, right? Where a Tiny can mind control the enemy carry into dying to him a few times. So <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking for that again. If uh, they want a shot at beating Hakori's lineup here i mean to be fair though i think thunder predator uh, hokori do have a decent lineup with the undying tombstone like tb doesn't really kill it all too easily especially if it's on yeah. the high ground and a troll warlord matchup versus tb is very good for the troll warlord but lumiere is going to have to be extremely formed yeah it is it is comfort zone right god it undying they know how to play around that and he's always very good at uh, you know holding buyback in particular to come back into team fights as our top rune spot Troll and Undying actually guard it down on the low ground. Looks like they will just chip away at the troll down to half HP, disengage, yep. get themselves the two for two bounty runes. And the things will it's, settle. It's very interesting. In the past, TB was a very good hero against Undying because he can kill the tombstone easily. But ever since like they added more more of these hills and locations where you can fight and drop the tombstone on the mm. high ground, it's gotten really tough for Terribly because Terribly wants to just stand this ground and fight. And Tombstone does the same thing, but better. <laughs> Especially if you're able to like set up as well. Like you know, we always talk about that vision game for undying and incredibly important. But mm -hmm. if you're the ones making the move, you know, into Radiant Triangle in particular, or you're the ones waiting on a high ground for a smoke to come your way, as long as you're set up as that undying, yeah, you, you can really dictate where the team fight takes place. See how it goes though for Garlic. Terribly going for reflection level one with the Orb of Venom on oh. the Mars. They just did like 20% of El Misho and Vitality's health and damage. This is going to keep spamming it, it looks like. 
Interesting. Is that a, like an adaptation because of the recent like metamorphosis nerfs, reducing that damage on uh -huh. uh, on meta? What? I think so, and maybe it just allows MJZ to have a little bit more help when he's trying to zone these heroes out as well. He's doing a good job right now. 5-1 and one on the TB, hasn't really taken too much damage. Vitaly has already spent two of his tangos, so has Elmisho. So yeah, it looks good bottom so far. Yeah, some, some good harassment and trading, yeah. Good stuff. Well, we can take a look into that top lane as well. You know, Shadow Shaman plus Frank's Pango up there. No strength heroes in that top lane, so Gardic not yep. going to have the, the the same kind of potency he would do if it was, you know, Mars off lane, for example. So that is a good mm -hmm. shift that Thunder Predator have made in their draft decision. Exactly. The adaptation there, spot on. Frank, uh, Rolling Thunder, not really countered in any way. We don't see any Grimstroke or Puck to be able to leash that Rolling Thunder in place. So, I, I guess think there's Frank's going to have Steal it? Ah, it's so hard. It, yeah. It's so hard to steal the Rolling Thunder. They just click the shield crash right away when they play against Rubik. I don't know, man. I've seen some players forget. <laughs> I've, I've yeah, definitely that's true. had that conversation with Lacoste in the past where it's like, what is level 9? Why doesn't he have shield crash yet? Oh, oh god. Oh, bottom lane. Vitalia now taking a beating from that level 2 Terrorblade who does have the Metamorphosis up. MJZ with Spear God's Rebuke really harassing and doing a great job trading this regen out. That's given mm. TB complete free farm in there. Well, once the meta is down, though, I think uh, Hokori are going to have a little bit of a timing when the Slaughter hits level 3 and the Rubik hits level 3 to be able to punch back in this lane. Get a bit of vengeance. And the final lane, of course, Leo style up against Analog. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of DK, Tempo heroes from Analog, uh, Bristleback, stuff like that. Right now, this tiny yes, silent stop under Ooh, the tower. Into the tower. The jump Analog. in from Leo Style. Oh, Incoming God, first blood for your mid puck. <laughs> oh, that waning rift. He wasn't expecting that. Yep. He uh, wanted to go for the tomball kill onto the puck and a little face shift, a little waning rift. Just gets out of there. I mean, that's a big that mistake on steal. his end, too, to go into the tower like that. MJZ. He does get. Punch back, like you said, Vitaly, as well as Olamin Show, getting a bit, getting a bit of action down bottom. Yeah, they're level three each, and I think this is a huge problem for Analog now. He's gonna have to, his rotations have to hit even harder because Leo Style is gonna get, Leo Style is gonna get to six faster. He's also gonna get this extra bounty, so even that kill afterwards, he has all these resources available, thanks to the two runes. Yeah, it's gonna be a monstrous puck now. But yeah, coming back to that. Oh, hang on a second. Frank, I slow down. One second. Those axes causing him issues. Swashbuckle down to low ground away from the tombstone. Perfect. Gardic wants a decay and a soul rip, and he might be able to catch him here. He does. A long range wow. slap down onto okay. Frank. That's impressive. Meanwhile, Vitaly being chased on bottom, and he's Freeze. just going to be okay. They don't have a whole lot of re uh, resources, though. Sutter. Oh, moves too. No way. Oh, they got oh, wow. it. Diving okay. into one. Yeah, I mean, not only is uh, Lumia free farming in this top lane, he also picks up two kills here. Or one assist and a kill. So the Undying working out very well in this laning stage. I mean, this is one of the scariest dual lanes, right? Undying Troll Warlord, even if you're not a strength hero. Yeah, you're just getting consistently pounded. I know Garlic's going to bring out Mangoes, Clarity, so he's going to keep that regen flowing so he can stay in the lane. Not having to go back to base or anything. Yeah, just, just back to analog though. Smoke. With oh, are they going in with the the coil potentially? Considering it was moves nearby. Waiting. Avalanche spent. Leo style. He was edging forward. I'll just wait for analog to show himself on his next wave and probably go for it. Looking towards the other lanes is like not going to be any TP response really. And there's Moose starting out with the ether shock shackles. Jump in from Leo style. Tanky. And there's the coil. He is he's tanky. A good toss back with the avalanche there. He doesn't snap the, the coil, but they've got the vision. Yeah, high ground. When that ward sees yep. him, he'll ping it out now, and he knows. <laughs> uh, analog feels bad, man. He he just can't catch a break. He died mid trying to make a play. Dying now dies again with the catapult it's here. He's gonna lose all on this experience. Like he doesn't what? even have boots yet, does he? Oh no, he's got boots. Okay. Whew. I was gonna say if he's he didn't have so boots, bad. that's real rough. <laughs> but it's, it is a very different. Out hero and kind of play style to what he's been playing previously. You know, this is Peru server, of course. Do you think it's a 
maybe a mistake from Hakori to to give something such, just such a drastic change from you know, the DK, the Invoker, the Bristleback that he's been playing consistently. Well, I see a gold tiny icon, so I think he's gonna be okay. He's gonna okay. be just fine. It's like Tiny's one of those heroes that's very easy to play, to be honest. You just gotta click your two abilities. You know, the item build is very locked in with Blink Dagger, Echo Saber, BKB. So you just have to use your game knowledge and make the plays happen. Got to get to that Blink Dagger first, though. That's what he's gonna be trying to rush towards as quickly as he can. What yeah, he actually, he's probably looking around the map too, and he doesn't really see any openings to gank any of the side lanes either. Especially with the puck just constantly shoving his lane into the tower. This is the problem for Analog right now. He's playing against a hero that shoves the lane really quickly. Plus, has become unkillable now because he just bought power treads on Leo style. He's got plenty of health too. Yeah, tons of it. Actually going to jump back to that. Die a high ground, get a bit of pressure onto Tiny. Force into expensive mana as well. It does look though down at bottom, Thunder Predator have ditched the lane a little bit. Scared of this level 5 Slardar, the Tiny who can potentially rotate in, so... They'll create that barrier in front of the Terror Blade with MJZ. Check out Gardic. Hold the lane. He's dropped the Tombstone on the high ground here, Leo Style wants to kill it. Hey, guy yield. Leo Style, you're no, you're suffering. <laughs> he's killed it. Ah, uh, he's got it. He's got the gold, and he's gonna get these two creeps. But he lost so much resources for it, though. Not entirely sure if that's. Uh, it's worth it. Got 150 gold for killing that tombstone. I won't be too bothered by it. Yeah. Okay, Eight minutes coming up soon as well. Rotating to bottom, while it's Rubik takes TV. over mid. Toss him in there, but a great spear actually catching Vitaly and allowing that early Sunder from Terrorblade. Hits level 6, cracks the ult, he turns it back on the slaughter, and now Tiny stranded under that tier 1 tower bottom. Analog, he's got his armor up from his ultimate, but that doesn't matter against that hard hitting TB. I mean, yeah, with a double does. kill. Way too forced of a rotation. I mean, Analog, he sits mid, he feels like he's doing nothing. So he goes bottom, but he's only with the slaughter. There's no Rubik there because Rubik wanted to take XP middle. So. Hokori are just falling apart, starting from Analog. Because he feels like he's gotta be doing something and he's not able to accomplish anything at this time in the game. If they wanna get the kill bottom, they gotta smoke. And they need to bring like four heroes, including Guardic, because yeah. that Soul Rip and Tombstone is how you're gonna be able to out team fight Thunder Predator. Yeah, they're the game changes. Well, yeah, maybe the uh, Analog Tiny could think about you know farming out some of these stacks, clear out the jungle, because he's He's going for phase boots first, so he's going to delay that blink dagger quite a bit. He's going to need something to lift his spirits and boost his net worth. As Frank, thinking about the rolling thunder over in that triangle, gathers up the bounty ring for himself. And now he'll start rolling away, realizing the tiny would be on his way. And he scouts oh, out all these stacks. Of... Like large camp. Exactly, ancients. there's a lot there. Huh. Ancients and the big camp. Well, the Troll Warlord is not buying Battle Fury. He's going for the Maelstrom, so Analog just going to pick this up right now. That's going to help him recover a little bit. Also occupies him his time, so he's not out there making not so good plays while he's still underleveled. Yeah, pushing him towards that blink so nice. Yeah, I mean, Lumia Troll, the hero that we've definitely seen him excel on. We haven't really touched on where he's heading. He's, he's top of the CS, top of the net worth. He's having a pretty perfect game out of that tremendous laning stage. We have to defend yeah. that tower against the Shadow Shaman for now. He's also opting for the Maelstrom over the Battle Fear because he's against the Terror Blade, who has incredibly high base armor. And you're going to need that magic damage at some point oh, to help you out. Telekinesis puts him away from the Tiny. It looked like Analog wanted to go for the kill. El Misho, not on the same wavelength as him. And Rune Spawning Top means an RK now in the bottle of Leo. What's he going to use that Leo for? Star. Troll? He's having a perfect game right now. You know, he's got uh, two kills, two assists, arcane Every rune is pretty much his. He can farm wherever he wants to. Troll Warlord not kicked out of top. Going to go farm bottom. So we're going to see like five heroes of Hakori playing around this bottom side of the map. And Frank is just here out pushing the lane with Swashbuckle all by himself. This is like not a very bad situation for Hakori to be in right now. And he's ready. But Pango is such a good hero to be holding this tower. Like you said, he can push the wave, but also potentially set up a team fight, right? If he goes for yep. Rolling Thunder, they could TP in, defend that objective. Yeah, Corey just going to back up, fall away. Oh, oh whoa. no! Whoa, 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 no. whoa. 
Not like ah. this. Did the observer catch that? Because I bloody didn't. He just died to an ancient. No. He's losing his courier as well. <laughs> that courier nearly died to the little golem. <laughs> well, that's not a great sign for Corey. They are going to smoke into the radiant triangle. They're looking for the TB. They spot Minos. Tiny. Is he fast enough? No, he's not. He avalanches, but can't get that with a toss. And the TP reaction from Thunder Predator. Now looking to try and swing back towards them. Fox even there in the vicinity, yeah, orbing on top of the Rubik. Steals the orb, so now he can try and disengage, but he's been coiled and leashed. Tombstone on the low ground. They're going to lose Elmisha even through the Soul Rip heal. Easy money with that tombstone to be grabbed up, too. Oh, Hakori. Starting to crumble now as Thunder Predator amassing their efforts into the mid lane and it looks like a tier one is going to be their prize. It's another 175 gold for Leo Star now. Yeah, they've got the Arena Spear as well, the backstab from MJZ. That's your position five, Mars, level seven, and on to analog we go. I don't want to jump high ground just yet. It looks like Leo Star yeah, was a little bit bothered that he's sitting at half HP. Yeah. He was waiting for it. Now he's got Wishblade plus a double damage rune and he took mid tower. The Ancients, is it complete yet? Nope, it's still alive, too. We saw Lumiere just go top after he revived nice after that right? death, and... Uh, whew! I mean, M MNZ, he can just go back into a jungle now. He already used meta, he got the mid-tower for his team. The whole map is for him, pretty much, to be able to farm up. Rolling Thunder still off cooldown. So let's see Leo style and Frank just heal up and just smoke right into that triangle area. I don't know how Hikari are going to team fight now. It's yeah. looking really rough. It has to be this Slardar Blink. I mean, Tiny is a thousand gold yeah. away from his Blink 12 minutes in, so they won't have that double threat from the initiation. But it's, it's They're going to need to punish with this Slardar Blink plus a very like strong Tombstone placement where Thunder Predator can't run away from. Leo Star just breaks straight up onto high ground. Double damage rune used up. Which play two? Gardic gone. Trying yep. to defend up his troll. And that was a, has got to ditch the top jungle. Almost a thousand two hundred HP undying with a raindrop and a wand. Good spear. He just back. got destroyed by the puck. And Frank's even swashbuckling forward and poking at this as if they want to try and fight it. It just means Hakori have to have to stop their efforts there. They're just keeping all the heroes there while Frank pushes mid, Moose pushes bottom out. And TV is farming top. So you got these three heroes just looking at Leo style and MJZ after losing their undying while everybody else on Thunder Predator just farming. Yeah, we, we still haven't seen the, the full real combo here from Thunder Predator with Arena, Coil, and Rolling Thunder. We've seen them kind of piecemeal one by one to pick off individual okay, Gary. heroes. But when that here we go. Is this the smoke? Here we go. Nope, they're going the wrong way. Oh dear. Well, they oh, might yeah, that... catch MJZ, if ever, but that's it. They're hesitating. Okay, they're out. So speaking of combos, you know what the real combo is? Coil into Terrorblade Agonist. Oh, yeah. The fear. Oh, yeah. Um, MJZ. Gold Rebuke and Arena. He speared up Vitaly. MJZ, he's not allowed to survive this. He's not allowed it to get away. Bottom. The zombies kill him off. Analog, internet. dead, though. As Leo Style finds that solo pick off down bottom. Yeah, Leo style actually TP bottom while MJZ was getting jumped, so he wasn't available right Rubik. away at the start. He's stolen out of the bulwark, but he's dead. That could have been a three-man coil, a little bit off the mark from Leo style, but with this rolling thunder from Frank connecting a couple of times onto Gardic, Leo just gonna jump forward onto this orb. It's just easy pickings, blinking away at him. A triple kill for Leo starts bottom with serpent wards and the shadow shaman killing off that tiny. Move into the mid for the two supports and. They're ready to go again. It looks like they're TPing mid to refill bottle and potentially smoke. Time to go find the troll. Let's go. Yeah. I mean, why not? Everybody else is dead. Hokori can't team fight. There's going to be splitting the map the whole time. So whichever lane that you choose, you'll probably be able to catch someone. And this is the biggest kill he can get. Ain't shown on that wave. Oh dear. Chain disabled. Yeah, there's, there's no escape. I don't, they can't even get battle trance off. 4k lead being built up now by Thunder Predator. And that was, you know, not having to expend any ultis bomb. So they actually win a fight mid. Everything's back up again in about 10 seconds. And while that's all happening, you've been saying it. Minos is farming. 9,100 net worth. Manta done. 2,000 in the bank.
and TB so far untouched. And Leo Stau is almost got like one more kill. He's on a monster kill right now. He's got that blink dagger coming out. And these supports are gonna have it's just an absolute nightmare for them. Like Rubik and Tiny, they can't do anything. Sorry, Rubik and uh, Undying can't do anything against this Witchblade Blink Dagger Puck, who just keeps hunting them in the back every single time. This way, nobody gives Leo style Puck. Yeah, they, they make a jump here. Okay, they blow up Frank. Ooh. That's yeah, a pick. That will take badly. The vision. I guess that's something they got going, right? You got the corrosive haze. Plus the Troll Warlord, or even the Tombow, you're gonna get the tree grab damage onto that hero who's minus armored. Maybe burst them. Yeah, they are edging forward, getting some real good vision down. Yeah, you've been saying the positioning from this Undying, if you can get towards these high ground kind of mountain areas, the spires that you put wards on top of, Tombstone placement could be vital for them. Yeah, and they're they just gonna change Roshan Pit. Yeah, exactly, they're just... vision top side. No, TP are just playing it by the book right here. They see that the uh, Hokori are naturally gonna go bottom to try to take this tier one tower. Let's just take the Aegis for free, and MNZ can just walk to the top tier two with this, and they will probably just get a free tier two plus the outpost take, because Hokori are not gonna want to fight into this Aegis anymore. They're, they're not even pushing bottom tower. Oh yeah, I, they don't know seem... what's happening. They don't know that Roshan's being taken. <laughs> yeah. They're... Uh, They're going to be hitting themselves now, thinking, hey, we could have had that free tower, we could have tried to get into this jungle, pushed a bit further forward, but they're very passive, afraid of the Thunder Predator side. Yeah, and now Puck TP is bottom and is ready to just hunt whoever's down here, knowing that top lane Smart is up. pretty much free. And they get the oh, block another nice kill. Again, yeah. you know, playing into their vision. That's another good move by Hakori. They are... Finding little bits here and there, but it feels like they're scraping the bottom of the barrel of what they can actually do. With a five-man move into mid, though, and again, un under this ward, they could set themselves oh, this is a good for move, a, though. an incredibly strong fight. This is really good for Hokori, because you know the Puck TP bottom, and he's kind of zoned out of that area because of where you're positioned with your heroes. This leaves Lumiere to get a really free tier 1 tower middle. And they're still playing under their vision, so if anyone walks into this, they're going to get tomboed. Oh, oh. they shift. Wow. Yeah, they toss the slaughter. They've still got a bash here and a bit of stun on Delia Style, who is coiled up as well, thanks to the Rubik Steel. Frank rolling back in and an arena, but missing out on that spear means Leo Style's monster kill streak does get removed. Well, the debut of that <laughs> Lumiere BKB paying off. A huge coil there, too, onto the puck. Just not only coil, but the lift, you know, stopping them from phasing out. And they get a nice kill there on the, on the puck. And that's a big kill, right? How much gold did he get? 600 gold? So that BKB was completely worth it, the usage of it. And whenever you get a kill like that, you know, you've got to be thinking about that Aegis timer. And Minos mm -hmm. has it for another three and a half minutes, but Puck dead for, what, 40 seconds or so means that's all wasted time. Thunder Predator definitely making a little bit of a mistake after taking that Roshan, though not smoking into the jungle. Like, they sort of just TP'd in vision, and that just allowed Hokori to be able to take whatever fight that they really wanted and now they dropped the lead to like 1k gold they, they, they're not feeling that bad considering tp did get the ages yeah, keep, keeps feeling like you know we're looking at this tp side like oh we haven't seen the full combo yet they've not really grouped up as five yet but those are uh, those are issues that they're having the hakori are exploiting pretty beautifully here and we're nearly at bkb on uh -huh. slada they're gonna have this real nice timing around him well, Control you're going to have to wait until well. uh, Terrorblade joins the fight, though. Because <laughs> I'm not sure if you clicked on him. He's yes. got a lot of items already. It's not even 20 minutes into the game yet. Manta and Scotty already complete. He's pretty huge. But that is, that is that that thought in the back of your head, though, right? You know, you get a pick off on a puck, you kill uh, Moos on the Shadow Shaman, sure. But when Thunder Predator make a move and they actually group up as five, their team fight is... Pretty monstrous. Is under attack. TB is just going to run straight in towards them. Coil on the two supports. Leashed and snapped. Sans the Rubik. Kill off Gardic. He's got a high ground tombstone, but no choice to fight around there. Everyone else is scattered to the wind. Yeah, they're, they're, not, they're just ignoring the tombstone. They're like, ah, this tomb isn't even worth my time. Just going to send an illusion there. It'll take like 20 hits to kill it, but all right. <laughs> Moose is going to come and help. There you go. <laughs> 
Does, wait, does he leave it for the TV? No, he doesn't. It's like... Moses money. Yep. And they kick him out of the bottom jungle. Goldie back up to 4,000 again because MNZ has shown up to the team fights now. And he's just looking to take tier 2 after tier 2. Reflection for Ami Show. That's not too bad. Oh, the jump from Vitaly. There's a phase shift immediately. Oh, and Black Trust, though, is the follow through. Puck trying to waiting rift away. And that arena holds him in place while Lumia's BKB is wearing out. And Terra Blade finds the snipe on El Misho. A little hex onto that Vitaly Slardar and Minos. Now he's showing his real power. A double kill. Leo Stoll picks up the third one. And that's the fear we had for her, Corey. Individual pickoffs, yes. Smoke ganks, sure. Fighting into your vision. Really good. But when Thunder Predator really turn this, this advantage to their favor, they're just going to go high ground. They still got a good amount of time left on that meta as well. So they're not they really have... afraid of Hakori just reviving and fighting right away. Did they misspell Siler in that chat wheel line? <laughs> Team Liquid Siler with an E. Did they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, whoops, it is. Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> On a tile and a barrel in front of though. I don't know who Siler is. Siler? <laughs> who who is that? Uh, are you talking about Siler Moon? Who's that? Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, what, what was the name of the was Siler the name of the wife in Breaking Bad? Um, was it? Uh I, I don't remember. I watched Breaking Bad like a long must time have been ago. Fourteen years ago or something, yeah. Breaking Bad Wife name. Radiant Skyler. Skyler. Oh, it's Skyler. With a Skyler, K, but yeah, okay. it was close. Yeah. Mm. Oh, they scan this. Radiant knows it's coming. Moose blinks away. Smoke broken. And Thunder Predator now can hold their own staircase. They get a D-Ward down. There's no high ground vision, but they walk straight up. The Coil onto and Dying only. Tombo there catches out MGZ, but that's Tiny's now stuck in the arena while the Rolling Thunder crashes into their troll. Zoning out Lumiere. Tombstone is being dealt with. Not fast enough, but a double kill out for Minos. Surely secures them this team fight. Not even the Mars died. And another blink back in. Moose has the Disables there. The Hex, but not the Shackles. He waited too long. He wanted the perfect disables onto the troll. Lumiere with his BKB and Battle Trance. He's getting some good damage in onto them, but a spear forces him away from Minos, and they could turn and hit him with just some illusions. Four down, only one traded out by the Thunder Predator side, and it's lead. It keeps building. Yeah, Hakori, you know, they got that MKB. They're like, all right, let's just try to do something. We can't just sit back and wait for this meta to be back up before we fight. Let's just try to take an engagement while meta's on cooldown. But MNZ, you know, he doesn't care. All he has to do is join the fight, pop reflection, just right-click heroes. He's got a BKB plus another 2,600 gold now, too. Like, even the Tombstone on the high ground can't save them anymore. They're just way too far behind. And it's not only MNZ, it's also Leo style, who does crazy amount of damage. Does he have Ag soon? Yeah, he's got the three normal components in his courier waiting for the point booster. Mm -hmm. I'll take down that bottom tier two. And there's, there's no rush either, it feels like, for Thunder Predator. Quite often we see with these kind of lineups, you know, they build a bit of an advantage, you win mid-game, but then there's some kind of threat on the other team that you, you do have to worry about. Here, you've got a Terror Blade, you've got a Puck, you are just so overfarmed. Entire map belongs to you, and you can kind of wait for next Roshan if you don't feel like pushing your advantage straight to buildings again. Yeah, they're just not in any hurry right now. MNC just wants to finish his butterfly first, and he's going to be pretty much two big items ahead of the Troll Warlord. Remember when I said Troll Warlord's a good matchup against TB, but he has to be really farmed? Well, yeah. Yeah, TB is uh, way too farmed for this Troll. Like I, Critical mass. He would have to disconnect, and then even then, I'm pretty sure Thunder Predator can still micro him with the amount of net worth that he has and finish this game. Just A move him, yeah, pop meta, A move. Press Mantra and BKB at some point. Oh yeah, they've got that Ags Puck now as well, but the DD rune on Leo style. Didn't go for the phase shift attack talent, went for that spell amp. So he's not going to have the, the heavy hits. Well, they just, very casually though, clear through a tier 3. E blade on Minos. <laughs> <laughs> Faking it out. Yeah, with the uh, illusion. Oh, they know the real one. Back. 
BKB comes out though, and he can turn oh, and sunder. Oh, the Lumiere Vitality BKBs, the Bashes, and Minos. He blades out onto the Tiny. Minos dead, the ranks are still falling though. Leo Stahl gets the job done. Oh, okay. I mean, that works out. I, I didn't realize he didn't have a butterfly. He went for an E Blade yep. in this game so that he can keep himself alive against the battle trance of the Troll Warlord or like just E Blade the Troll, right? And uh, because they both pop BKB on the Sada and the Troll, he couldn't really find a target to Sunder either. Which is very unfortunate for him. Just gets punished by the troll tossback. I mean, they get that MNZ kill, but you still lost your axes, and it's only 26 minutes into the game. Yeah, and with 45 seconds till next Roshan, it feels like Thunder Predator are going to be able to grab that up for themselves as well. But equally, it could be, could be a flashpoint for activity. You know, if Gardic stays in here and sees Roshan is up, what we've we got? 15 seconds for TB. Yeah, there's going to be a 15 second window when he is alive before Roshan respawns. But Gardic gets some good vision down. Yeah, he did. This next Roshan fight could maybe bring Hakori back into this game if they are able to execute with a nice tombstone. Get oh, another kill on MNZ very similarly. But that time he had, they had the help of the tier 4 tower, right? Doing some damage to MNZ as well. Yeah, they need all the artillery they can get. This next Roshan. fight is going to be like a Mars Arena to help out. Then you're also going to have the Pango with the Greaves. Not going to be as easy as last time. Yeah, they see Roshan's up. Go on, Hikori. You've got to get over here. Rubik, Troll. They've got TPs. Gardic in that mid lane with Vitali and Analog not making the move. They're just going to give this up. What are we here? Now we're going to have that... Aegis and Cheese over on Thunder Predator. Who, who gets the shard? Do we get to see puck? the TB shard? Well, you can get the puck. No? Who got it? Oh, TB took TB? it, yeah. yeah. Alright. I mean, it's not bad because it allows him to fight even without his meta on, right? It's um twice the bonus in his melee form. Frank, walking up high ground. He's got Eon Disc. A jump in from Tiny. Leo Star is still pretty tanky, and they've got the Arena Spear onto him. So Analog's caught up. They've snapped the coil on Lumiere. The reflection's whacking into him. He's e just been e blade zapped <laughs> down. The huge damage. I mean, it's 220 odd Agi on that Terror Blade. So E Blade's doing a significant amount of damage, and they've neither of them got buybacks. He just bursted him like for 600 damage there with his E Blade. Like, who needs to right click heroes when he can just blow them up with their agility? Fun. You can see here Frank just walking in with his Aeon Disc, providing the vision for his team, getting that rolling. Oh, I can't get it off, and then he just kind of dies here. And the Troll Warlord just breaking that coil. So yeah. sad. I don't think he realized that... Uh, he didn't even BKB when he broke the coil, right? So even if he, he didn't have the Axe Coil, he was probably still going to die because of that. Probably. Nice word, bro. And, yeah, just losing nice that on word, there. Bro. I like Way that. Too much feels over. Oh, the nice sword, bro, yeah. Yeah. E oh, look at that E blade. <laughs> like half HP onto poor Gardic. <laughs> Foregone conclusion, though, it's felt like the past 10 minutes or so. 20k leader massed, all the buildings are gone. And tier 4's crumbling. My Thunder Predator it really did dictate the way this game went from a pretty early stage. Leo Star gonna call them in their fountain. Snap the coil with a good spear. Lumiere snaps the coil himself by walking forward. Your throne is dead, so just having a bit of fun before the game ends properly. And Thunder Predator take game one, and it's best of three. Yep. Well, this one game, I think uh, Thunder Predator, they could call it a job done, but actually the job's not quite yet done. They still need to win one more game, but, you know, they just showed up. They played, they did what they had to do. I think the moment that Leo Style got that first blood and Tiny yeah. died again the second time around seven minutes or whatever, it, it just felt like... There's no place for Hokori. You know, you needed your Tiny to be your playmaker, your tempo controller, and he just kept playing from behind and making plays that doesn't really make sense. And this TB, he just got way too farmed at some point and just ended the game with it. I think Hokori, they're going to have to step up. They can't like, have this happening, with, especially with their tempo controlling hero and the Tiny. Yeah, we'll see if you know the draft makes a difference next time. Maybe you know the DK or the Bristleback could come out to play. But uh, it kind of felt like Thunder Predator had their number. Game two, though, coming up. At